my presentation won't be so much about photography, though uh, all the works you're gonna see are documented as photography. And second, that uh, at least in the first part, most of the works I'm gonna show you, you probably already know them. But I am uh, rather trying to illustrate some mechanisms on it. Uh, then uh, there is one uh, information important also at the very beginning that uh, all the argumentation I'm going to present here is uh, standing on one presumption, is it, it which is that the caption uh, can influence the experience of the artwork. Yeah? So if someone disagree with this and think that the work of art is just uh, matter, uh, we can discuss this after, please. Uh, <laughs> So what you see here is a caption, a caption on the wall, yes, uh, it's quite common, but uh, thanks to our moderator, uh, we have also experienced previously that the caption can actually be spoken. So, uh, caption, I would say, or suggest, uh, usually consists at least of the name of the artist and the title of the work. Uh, in here, with Donald Judd, we see that the title is untitled. It, uh, again, I would suggest that it doesn't mean that uh, Donald Judd forgot to give it a title or that he wouldn't know what title to give it, but that he actually wanted to point the fact that he doesn't want to give it a title because important is the matter. Uh, in this sense, uh, also the English is a bit nicer than the Czech, German or French, where we say without title, because the untitled means that it's not that the work has no title, but that the artist actually intentionally decided to have it, left it untitled. So if we still uh, would stuck to the title of the work as a, as a linguistic component of the work, we could uh, go to the semiotics and uh, have a look at uh, what are the main, uh, let's say, kinds of the, the meaning. So then we could suggest that the titles are either denotative or connotative. Yeah, as, we, as you maybe know, that the denotative dimension of the word is the one what it is. Yeah? So let's say the chair I'm sitting on is a chair, it's something to sit on, while the connotative is rather some, uh, um, let's say, association it can carry. So a chair is a position in the company or somewhere else. So in here you can see that with the Robert Smithson, with the title is the denotative, it somehow explains what the work actually is. It's mirror and crash shells. Yeah? Why with the connotative Barnett Newman title, the Stations of the Cross series, you might also notice that you have not seen any Jesus there, nor any cross actually, it's an abstract painting. So he's rather trying to suggest you what you should see there, how you should react to the work of art. Yeah. Maybe if we would uh, go a bit further, we could also suggest that actually the denotative title is somehow specific for conceptual works of art, while the, the, the connotative titles has been used also by Barrett Newman and some of his, uh, at that time, friends. Uh, however, as um, this uh, bipolar description might not seem rich enough to actually fill all the artwork titles we can meet, I have been looking a bit around uh, if there has not been some other uh, classification given. And the classification I'm going to present to you is a classification of uh, Gerald Levinson, who is a uh, philosopher from the United States, and uh, uh, he has stepped uh, away from this connotative denotative dimension and tried to rather make it be more rich. So in this sense, the first category he proposed is the neutral titles. Uh, I have um, proposed chosen the work of John Baldessari because it also represents the textual works where the titles are often what the text is, or at least uh, the very beginning of the text, and is this in this sense. So we can say that um, a bit like with the Donald Jude, also this neutral aim to give a title is a certain withdrawal from the title slot. Yeah, the artist does not use the, the slot of the title to give some meaning to the work. The, the meaning is already in the work. Another example of the neutral title I think would be here Martin Creed. I could have also used the work of Tomasz Wanik, who sits next to me, who also uh, number his works with Particip. But uh, unfortunately, he also sometimes says something more than on this number, while Martin Creed really only stuck to the number. So in this uh, sense, it's again a certain withdrawal. The number itself does not say anything about the specific work, though it says something about the body of work of the artist, 
like in this sense we see that the work number 1461 so it probably means he made quite a lot before uh, the another category uh, Levinson proposed is the underlining titles in here the title from Anne Collier, Woman with Cameras, might seem something as similar to the Robert Smithson. Yeah? And of course it is. But uh, if it would be more interesting if you would rather consider that the work would also be, for example, called Nude with Cameras. Yeah? So what I'm also trying to say with my presentation is that uh, uh, unlike uh, in the real world, as the title is the intention of the artist, we also read it in that way. So if Anne Collier calls her work with the title Woman with Cameras, whether with Nude with Cameras, or for example the advertisement from the 80s for cameras, it also means maybe that she wants to underline a certain gender aspect towards technology. Uh, the opposite, of course, of the underlining titles are the undermining titles. And here, with the photo of Julian Waring, uh, which is called Self-Portrait at 17 years old, we, if, we, if there would be the part of the caption, the, the date where the artist was born, we would see that she was born 1963. Therefore, in 2010, when this work was made, she was definitely not 17 years old. So, of course, she's trying to tell us that the photography can lie. Yeah? But uh, in the way that the title actually undermine what the actual work is somehow saying. Focusing titles is another work. Of course, looking at all those categories, uh, you may think that it's a bit simplifying, yeah? that you might disagree sometimes or something, and even himself, Gerard Levinson, is uh, saying that they might be overlapping. Okay? And any kind of categorization, of course, is only ideal, cannot be uh, taken as a totality. Yeah? But here, the, the point is always rather to think how the work would be called differently. Focusing title is the one which gives a focus to something. In here, the work itself could actually work without the title. We see that there are different representations, even if we don't know the title. But the fact that it's one and three chairs actually underlines the fact that there are three different representations of one object, so, which means the image, the real object, and the textual definition. Uh, key titles, which would be somehow also linked again to the focusing titles, are, are in the way that they give the necessary information to actually experience the work. Yeah? You could maybe say that once more with the Joseph Kosut, you could understand what he wanted to say with the 3D presentation without the actual title. So the title is not necessary. Uh, while this work, maybe you could also, but I would suggest that you would have trouble to actually understand the fact that it's that the work is actually once more a uh, visualization of the uh, of the sentence from hand to mouth. Yeah, and that of course of color play on the living on the line of the poverty that you're living from hand to mouth. And the last category he proposed are allusive titles, which are somehow the key titles, which is the subcategory, maybe you could say. Uh, but in this sense it means a reference to another work of art. Yeah, in this uh, in this sense it was odalesque. But uh, captions are not only about titles. Yeah? In this sense, uh, of course, it's a somehow key title, but in this sense, it's more a key medium. If you see the work itself, you might not actually understand it's from bronze. You might just think that it's a banana slip left over on the floor. And the, the medium then, which is a crucial to understand or experience the work, is mentioned on the title, on the caption. Uh, when we were uh, speaking about the general language, etc., uh, the, there is a problematic uh, part of co conceiving titles as names. Yeah? In the literature and everywhere, of course, what people say, the titles are not names. Yeah? That because names are arbitrary. The fact that I am called Michal is not saying much about me, even though, of course, you can disagree and you can say that it says that I may be from Slovak language, etc., etc., it is arbitrary, it could be also called David, for example, and it would not change my essence. Yeah. Uh, so in the example of this work, actually the artist used the, the name as a title, but uh, as you can see, uh, she's been also playing on this impossibility of giving the title as a name, which would somehow be a withdrawal again from the title slot, but she also react to the fact that the work is phrased from hematite, which somehow may associate the, the name Emma, 
And also if you look at the ontology of the world Emma, the name Emma it means also the whole. Yeah, as much as Evatite is often associated with this. So you can somehow use also the name as a title without working it as a name. Uh, then another uh, dimension uh, of the title might be actually the, the pure visual or actually musical titles. <coughs> it's actually what John Chamberlain was often doing uh, in here with the works from Marole or Ultima Thule. Of course, they are not supposed to especially mean something towards the, the, the actual sculpture. But he's rather playing on the musicality or in the Ultima Thule and other titles of his own by the graphic elements of, of the titles. Uh, when we consider the caption, the caption is also always written in a certain graphic design with a certain typography and, and a graphic plan. Maybe you have also noticed on the previous uh, captions which I've written that they might associate actually the work of Barbara Kruger, which you've seen in the previous presentations. These are the captions from Nina Bay and Maria Lund, which they are not always using. But it, in many exhibitions, they have been actually using this same format and layout. So, so I would also like to actually suggest that the graphic design of, is something which can be played with as a creative act. Uh, so now I think we have uh, established the position of the caption enough that we can come to the work where they say there is no work, only the title. This is the one of the examples, which is the work of Mario Garcia Torres, which is called Untitled Missing Piece. As you can see, the intervention listed works as a rights work for a catalog. It's actually not a work to be exist as a label in the space, but in a catalog which do not relate to anything. Uh, this is the opposite case, where actually Maria Anwander is exhibiting the captions which she has stolen from uh, different museums and, and gallery halls and which are her uh, favorite artworks. But of course in this case the captions she exhibits has also their own caption with the name of Maria Anwander and the, and the, the dimensions etc. <laughs> uh, generally the, the this is also the reaction to the previous uh, presentations we have heard today. Yeah, the problem general with the with the text and image, if we are speaking about photography with the text and object, is that of course often they merge. Yeah? The artists are putting the actual caption on the work itself. But uh, what I'm trying to suggest here that still those work as much as once more in the case of Koshwood, where actually there would not necessarily need to be the caption, this work which actually merged the image, the object with the caption, it does still have a caption. While here we are getting to the real, uh, let's say, uh, if I could call it radical, but more in a joking way, it's uh, actually a work of you cannot really read it, and I need to find it now. Uh, American artist with a, called William Anastasi, and it's actually the two captions which are of course relating to each other. So you don't know actually which one is the work and which one is the caption. But uh, once more presented on the gallery website of this artist, actually it does have its own caption again. So we have seen many examples of works where there are captions without works, different plays on a caption, but we have not seen many works where actually there would be the work and no caption. It still remains a certain uh, dogma, which is not often or I have not found and not myself experienced in the actual space. So one of the works which I have experienced is this work of Boris Don Bush, where actually he withdrew both from the slot of the actual presence of the work and both of the caption. The, the work is an installation in the corridor of the gallery, where, which is in the, one of those settlement blocks where there is living, I don't know, 200 people, which has different uh, mailboxes. And he has uh, agreed with one of the inhabitants of the building that he will hide into his mailbox a mobile phone with an alarm setup of 5.30 a.m. Yeah. So, as he has also not put any caption to actually speak about the existence of this work, nobody almost probably has ever experienced the work, or if he has experienced the work, he maybe didn't understand that it's a work of art. 
though uh, he presented the documentation on his website and he presented online where actually the work has a caption. So he's using the caption, but only in the sense of the documentation. Yeah, because uh, this is also the, the part that the caption has a different uh, way of life within the actual space and within catalogs, within books, as we have seen already in the case of the two caption work of Anastasia. Uh, this is also the, the actually current website of Boris Don Bush. As you can see, there are no uh, names, no information. There are only links to some other websites. Uh, you cannot even find his name, unlike in the address of the website. And it's a decision he made only recently, and he is not presenting any any image nor any work on his website. He only presents links to the images which has been previously re repasted from his own website. So if those works will also disappear from the other website, they will actually disappear from their very existence. Yeah, this is an example of work of one Czech artist, uh, it's called Pavel Sterec, and uh, uh, the caption here is actually the speaker on the right side. He has not put the caption in the frame of the label on the paper, but he has let the Horus actually sync the name of the artwork and the dimensions and the usual information which are there. So what I try to suggest here, uh, with all these uh, works you have seen about caption, on caption, etc., is that I think that uh, the caption by the development and by the going on of the art has become a certain autonomous slot, which of course you cannot avoid, you can let it in fulfilled, but it will still be there. But at the same time, what I think that by that actually, it became that the caption is not only related to the text, or at least not in some of its part, for example, the title. The title would not necessarily today need to be a text, it could be an image. Of course, we could come to the point, and you could disagree with me, that, for example, if you have two paintings in the gallery, and uh, so one of them could be a caption if there is no caption, and maybe the other one is the work or the opposite, and how do we actually know that? Yeah? Like, how do we get the difference if there is no suggestion of, about this? But I still think that uh, it's, it's the similar situation as with a sculpture or with a painting. We still can somehow recognize painting. We still see that monochrome painting is actually a painting. We see that another thing, uh, a slip of banana on the floor, just because it's in the space of the gallery, is a work of art. Yes, yeah? so I, I cannot suggest because I'm not an artist, I'm not going to do work about it. But I think that actually the, the slot of the caption could be used much more freely than it's actually being used right now. And where it is starting to be used in this free way is the internet.